for hippocampal atrophy in childhood onset SLE. Uh, this is uh, from Brazil, from Dr. Appenzeller's group, and the presenter will be Dr. Barbosa. Actually, it's Dr. Appenzeller herself. Good afternoon. I also would like to um, thanks uh, for the opportunity to present our work. Uh, uh, this work was done at the State University of Campinas, and we have a grant from Penla and from uh, FAPESP for this research. So central nervous system involvement is associated with increased morbidity and mortality and has a high prevalence in patients with SLE and even higher in, in cohorts that analyzes in, in childhood SLE. And studies suggested that the hippocampus, that is a brain area important to memory and learning, may be a specific target for some autoantibodies in neuropsychiatric SLE. Uh, in adults, we have previously shown that there is hippocampal atrophy and that this is associated with the total dose of corticosteroids and the clinical expression of the hippocampal atrophy was cognitive impairment. So the objective of this study was to determine the prevalence of hippocampal atrophy in childhood onset SLE and to identify clinical laboratory and treatment features associated with its occurrence. So we included 40 SLE patients that fulfilled the ACR criteria with disease onset before 16 years. And the control group consisted of healthy subjects with similar age and gender and socioeconomic status as well. So, and the neurological manifestations were analyzed following the American College of Rheumatology criteria. So the cognitive evaluation was done by the Wechsler Intelligence Scale according to the ch uh, child's age and the mood disorder by Beck's Depression and Anxiety Inventory and the disease features was ana were analyzed for the following the disease activity, great, uh, uh, activity criteria, like the sleep dye, and the damage by the slick criteria. Uh, the total and cumulative dose of corticosteroids and other immunosuppressant drugs were analyzed for each child. And uh, all children uh, did uh, MRI scan a free Tesla Philips scanner, and the sagittal images that were, there were T1 weighted images with one millimeter uh, slices were used for analysis. And we defined atrophy if the hippocampus volumes were smaller than two standard deviation from the means of our control group. So that is an example of our, um, of our segmentation. And here we see in one slice that the hippocampus, the right hippocampus is smaller than the left hippocampus. So we observed that the right and left hippocampal were significantly smaller in SLE patients when compared to controls, and there was no significant difference between the right and left hippocampal volume in patients and controls. We observed 60% of our SLE patients had hippocampal atrophy compared to one control, that were 2.5%. And most of our patients had bilateral atrophy, but in six patients we observed only right and in five patients only left hippocampal atrophy. The uh, hippocampal volume reduction was associated with cognitive impairment, with age of onset, with the current age, with positive anticardiolipin antibodies, with disease, longer disease duration, presence of cutaneous vasculitis, and total dose of corticosteroids. So we concluded that the hippocampal atrophy was frequently observed in our childhood SLE cohort. Cognitive impairment was the clinical expression of the hippocampal atrophy in these children. And the importance of identifying factors associated with hippocampal atrophy allows us to develop strategies to prevent its occurrence. I would like to thank the patients and controls and the 
supporters for this research, and these are all the people involved in the research. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for comments or questions. Hi, good afternoon, and congratulations. I'm from Mexico City. Uh, how did you define uh, in, uh, cognitive impairment uh, at, at the first and the second? How did you define uh, vasculitis in this kind of patient? And if you, uh, did you realize a, an adjustment for uh, confounding variables or those steroids? Uh, so, for this study, we defined cognitive impairment as uh, scores lower than, uh, than two standard deviation from the controls. Uh, the vasculitis was defined following the SLE criteria, the SLIDI criteria. And the last question, I didn't get that. If you realize uh, an adjustment for the dose of the steroids in, in related to the uh, hippocampal uh, Oh, I didn't get the question. Can you just say that and again? If you really, uh, realize uh, 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 adjustment for uh, steroid doses. So, yes, we did the total corticosteroid and we adjusted it for weight and we found an association with both of it. It's, was that the question? Could I just ask you one question? As you know, uh, cognitive impairment can be somewhat evanescent. It can come and go. Uh, I'm just wondering, have you had an opportunity to follow some of these children longitudinally to see what happens to the hippocampal volume over time? So, yeah, uh, the first thing that we observed actually was that when we did patients and controls, we had a high percentage of cognitive impairment also in our control group, but this was not associated with hippocampal atrophy, so that was a finding. And uh, we are now analyzing them on, on a prospective study to see how, they, uh, how this cognitive impairment will trend over time. So if there are no more comments, we'll bring this uh, session to a close. I'd like to thank all the presenters uh, for sticking to time and uh, keeping us on, uh, on schedule. Thank you.